All right, this is a video just kind of walking you through how I designed and printed some exhaust adapters to get rid of the smell on my um, S1 and P2 lasers. Um, now, this is the S1 laser adapter that the hose went on. You can see it's, it's a fairly small hose on there. And it's the adapter where I went into the 4-inch hose. But every time I use it, I get some spell that leaked out of it. It just didn't exhaust it right. And it was due to um, the size of the hose, I think, and the... Uh, you know, trying to bend it in a tight radius. So I went into Libre 3D. I'm loving this program and designed up a quick um, part to print 3D to just mount the 4-inch hose right on the back of the S1 laser. And there you can see that took a couple minutes to design. And I designed it so I wouldn't need any supports, I was hoping. I'll show you in a second how it came out. And then I just went over into Creality Print. This just is so easy to use. Throw it in there, get your setting set, and slice it. Takes a second. Works good. And then I just, uh, from there, you can just, uh, the printer's online, so I can just uh, click on that and send my print to it. I'm sitting upstairs, and the printer's downstairs, so it makes it really easy. And then I can start, run the print, and monitor it from, you know, up in the warm dining room while the printer's down in the cold basement. So there it is. We started. Let's take a walk downstairs and just look at it. And there you can see it's um, started up, starting to print. Um, this is some really old filament that I use. Amazon's been backed up due to the throughway being closed with the snowstorm. And I'm um, waiting for some new filament. But that's like an eight-year-old roll that's been sitting open in the basement. So I'm not expecting a lot out of it. But it did come out pretty good in the end. And there you can see this machine is fast. It's a uh, it's I've got about 300 hours on it now, no problems. And there you can see the filament. It's got some some issues. Um, maybe the settings off and stuff. But here's some of the stuff I printed out already with this uh, K1 printer. And you can see all these pack out boxes. I've done some videos about them, and I'll I'll be doing an update pretty soon about all of them. But you've seen some of them started, and uh, this printer just does a beautiful job. Um, Everything comes out good when you use a Creality Hyper PLA. All different parts. Some of these I bought and um, these files I bought printed out. You can see I'm getting everything organized now. And then some of these I made up myself. I designed this little box for the jigsaw. And um, the Kaizen foam I've laser cut. I've got that figured out. And that's when I realized how much smell was getting in the shop from the lasers. And got me going on this project. Anyhow, a couple hours later, print's done. It's not perfect, um, and I didn't expect it to be with that old filament. You could hear it popping and hissing. It had some moisture in it, I guess. But it came out pretty good. It's usable. I'll just clean it up. Uh, I take a uh, just a little tiny torch and just hit it with it and burns off all the strings and um, cleans it up nice. But, you know, I'm surprised how good a printer with no supports just amazed me. Um, I was able to print this. All these overhangs and stuff. There it is. I, I cleaned it up a little bit. And let's see if it fits. This is the adapter on from the back of the S1. Fits on there perfect. I tell you what. This uh, K1 printer really did a wonderful job. I'm having so much fun with it. Anyhow. So that first one is done. And now the inside of this adapter. You can see it's got like a half inch ring all around it blocking off the airflow also so i decided i was going to try to remove that with my router and i just put a long flush trim bit in and i'm i'm going to tell you that probably it's safest to take it out with like a dremel or something like that um this did work in the end but it you know it can be dangerous trying to machine on plastic that you don't know what it is so i just put that really long bearing bit in the uh, router table I wanted to make sure it was all, you know, safe to use. And let's drop this bit down. Make it make it the right height. I had to go long to get above those threads that are inside this adapter. Because I wanted to remove them. And there you go. Oh, just got to drop that bit down just a little bit. So nice having a push button control on this table. It just works perfect every time. And there we are, ready to go. Now, you'll notice that I have a clamp on this thing because I don't want to be holding on to it should it um, grab or explode or anything like that. 
and in the end it actually wound up uh, machining nice and you know coming out nice but you know you never really want to hold on to a piece of plastic when you're routing it because that can grab can explode it can do all kinds of crazy things but here this one I got lucky with and uh, came out perfect so there it is all ready to go over and throw it on the uh, the machine looks good I think it's gonna work good so there's the hose that was on it. It's a little tiny hose. You can see I had an adapter and I had to bend it tight to fit it up against the wall and then adapt into the four inches. And I think that's a constricting area on this. Um, I'm amazed that there's just such a tiny hose coming out of these things and such a little fan. Because, you know, there are dangerous fumes being created in these lasers. And there's a new one. It's just a humongous compared to that and it you know right angle isn't the best way to go on it but i think it'll be plenty of flow and actually in the end it turned out really working good and then the four inch hose fits right on there so no adapters no hoses no you know internal size reduction due to uh, flanges and stuff and in the end it, it actually worked perfect so you know got me got everything outside and again, these lasers should always be vented, I feel. Now, here's a P2. I looked up at that, and that's got the same small hose. And I've been getting smell from that one since I installed it, and I decided to uh, do that one next. Uh, make it kind of kind of similar to this. I'm going to play a little bit with the design, but, um, you know, it, 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 it does have really nice flow using the two fans, the internal fan and then this fan, even though it is a 90-degree. I mean, you could make something bigger, too, a big sweep if you have room behind it, but I just wanted to keep it close to the wall. And there you can see it fits nice and tight. Everything uh, fit on there tight, works good, and I'm happy with that one. So back upstairs to um, design, start up a Libre, and I designed a different one, and this time you can see I put a flange around it, which I actually went back and added to the first one. And I changed that bottom around to just a little ledge to see if I could 3D print it without supports using that little ledge to start out. So I'm just playing games here and having fun. And there you can see I sliced it again, Creality Slicer. And throw it, upload it right to the machine downstairs and let me start this print up here. I can control everything and watch everything remotely with this. It's really nice. Everything works perfect. Let's start this up. You see I'm using blue filament this time. I tried another old roll of filament. Um, this one did, did do a little bit better. I'll show you in a second. Uh, just, as, uh, just looking at the first layer. You can see that K1 puts down really nice prints. and I'm so happy with this machine. I mean, I could have spent more and got a, a, you know, a different, more expensive machine, but it wouldn't have made me any happier. So... This one's turned out being good with 300 hours on it, and I did tighten the belts at 100 hours, and it's time to tighten them again. You can see there's a little bit of ringing in it, but otherwise that's basically it. Just put filament in it and run it. I love it. Okay, so there's the second one. A little over three hours later, and I think it was a little under four hours later, actually. And came out really nice. I'm, I'm happy with it. Got a couple, I mean, it's not the best filament, but still it's, you know, it, it looks good and everything's solid and well bonded and everything else. So it will work. And I did use PLA, uh, which may not be the best choice for this, but I think it'll work with the constant airflow. And this one fit perfect too. And it printed pretty good without any supports. So I'm pretty amazed. A little bit of roughness down there, but otherwise everything, uh, everything came out, you know, pretty good. Again, uh, you got the wide open flow there for the one fan to push it out and the other one to pull it. You know, as long as you remove the, the back pressure on those infinity fans, they really can move a lot of air. With back pressure on them on the input side, you've got a problem. So that fit on there perfect. And I decided, I don't know if this is the right thing to do or not, but I just decided to cut that grill out of there because it was just blocking so much of the air too. I just want as clean air as I can in my shop. And um, actually, in the end, this did make a big difference. So I'm happy. I guess I don't know what that's for because you'd have to, anything would have to go through the fan first. I guess that's to keep fingers out. 
and I'm not going to put my fingers back there. So I got this mounted on the hose, got that back in place, and ready to just pop that on there. Really nice snug tight fit. It fit right in place here, and you can see I got the same, same thing going right up, and let's get that little old hose out of there. Add all those adapters and stuff that reduce the size. And get the new 4-inch hose up in there. That's the big thing when you're using these uh, booster fans like this. You don't really, they don't really do well with a lot of back pressure on the input side of them. You know, they do push some pressure out the front, but um, anything on the input side really slows them down. So this did make a big difference and uh, everything's good now. Everything's vented. And, you know, as I've always said before, you always want to make sure these machines are vented. Um, they can kill you if they're not, especially with like plastics and acrylic. So that's all done. Now, looking over at this own tech machine, you can see that one actually came with a five inch duck on it. That's why I figured going with a bigger duck would, you know, make a difference. And it actually did. So they got it right on the, the polar there. And here's my old uh, D. D2 uh, machine that's going. Uh, you can see I had the 4 inch fan on that, and that worked good too, no smell. So, you know, 4 inch seems to be pretty good for these. And these D2s, I understand, are being discontinued now. So, if you want one, you might want to pick it up. Um, they are a great ma machine to get started with, and they're very durable. And definitely, I will say that these uh, filter assemblies here are not worth it, they're not good. I've been told they're not good for acrylic, they're not safe for acrylic use, and they plug up fast when you're doing wood on them. So I think they're kind of a waste of money if you can vent it outside. Um, even if you use this box, you still should vent that box outside. So in the end, this worked for me. It was a fairly easy fix. And I mean, if you bought one of these X tool machines through my link, just send me an email and I'll uh, give you I can give you a copy of this file to use for personal use. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.